What's up, everybody? I'm Najee Adams. And I'm Hunter Jacobs. And you're listening to the Hoop on Nets podcast. So it's been like 20 days since our last podcast was uploaded, but we are back, and uh, we will be cranking out episodes for you this off season. This is actually, I guess, the first episode of the official off season for the Nets. For the Nets. The for the Nets. For the Nets. Uh, the NBA is actually still going on. The Warriors have made the finals for a fourth time or fifth. Fifth, fifth in a time. row a for their time. fourth title in five years on the way. There we go. And uh, the Raptors and Bucks are in a battle to so, see. So uh, just saying our finals matchup prediction of Warriors-Raptors is still alive. It is. Uh, the Raptors are currently up 3-2, so we very well could have been right. Uh, just to give you guys some uh, updates, uh, we called – I said – Warriors and five. I also said Warriors and five. But the I thought Dame would get at least one game off, but uh, they ended up getting clapped in four. And, uh, yeah, Dame apparently separated his ribs, which is tragic. Hopefully he gets better soon. And uh, we said Raptors in seven. Still a possibility. Still a possibility, yes. But hopefully the Raptors end, win in six. And uh, I honestly hope they beat the Warriors. I'm sorry. I'm not a Warrior. I, I'll tell you right now, it's not going to happen for a 100% fact. Will not happen. But I like the, the thought of it happening. And Kawhi, we trust. And Kawhi, I trust. Since we've been gone, the, the, the NBA has obviously gone through the first and second rounds of the playoffs. And uh, what I guess pertains to the Nets... The most would be the lottery, even though they didn't have a lottery pick. But before we get into that, let me just get through the intro. Thank you guys for listening. Make sure you subscribe on iTunes. You can look up Brooklyn Nets. You can look up Hootball Nets. We are the first people that come up, so make sure you hit that purple subscribe button on iTunes. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Hoopball Nets. Uh, tweet at us anything you want us to talk about, any ideas you have, any suggestions you have, anything you just want to chat about. We'll gladly respond, like, retweet, anything you guys want. But, uh, yeah, shout out to Hawaiian House Kona Coffee Company for sponsoring this podcast and every other hoop ball podcast. You can find them at High Kona Coffee on Twitter, H I K O N A Coffee. Check them out on Amazon as well. And, uh, yeah, let's get into this. So, the lottery. If you weren't paying attention, the lottery this year was absolutely insane. They changed up the, the odds for every team so that the first team, the, the worst team in the league, doesn't just get a 30% chance or whatever. And- I am a huge fan of the new method. Honestly, as you know, I'm a Celtics fan. I just did not want the Knicks to get Zion. The Knicks didn't get Zion. I'm happy. Yeah, honestly, I obviously I'm a Lakers fan, so I'm ecstatic. We'll get into that later, though. But I don't know if every lottery is going to be this exciting. But I believe at least one team will move up that's outside of the first seven every single year with this method. And we're off to a good start, obviously, because... I honestly want to say that was the the best lottery the NBA's had in years, or at least the most exciting one. And a lot of people are are saying that this is going to deter tanking. I don't think it's going to stop tanking. Teams are always going to tank because even that 15% chance. And honestly, teams that are 10 and 50 are going to have no motivation to win the last 22 games because if they win 22 straight, they're still the 13th seed in their conference. I think tanking will always live. It'll just evolve and adapt to whatever way the NBA commissioner tries to turn to stop it. But the lottery, the New Orleans Pelicans are the number are getting Zion Williamson. Did you like unless they trade it to the Knicks for Anthony Davis? But they they would not. They wouldn't trade their pick to the Knicks for Anthony Davis. Oh yes, yes. (laughs) Imagine. Regardless, Regardless, they're getting Zion. But. Zion did not seem too happy when with that he result, didn't. and I feel I, I kind of felt bad for him because like imagine sitting there with all your friends and like every the cameras just constantly on like it was awkward, it was clearly awkward and for, and for R J Barrett yeah and but it was cool to see the three of them sitting together like laughing excitingly watching the lottery and like. They never show prospects doing that usually. This is like the first year we've seen the prospects on the edge of their seat, like going crazy when teams are jumping into the top four picks. John Morant was there too, but I didn't see him on a single. I didn't see him on everyone, television. Everyone not once. showed the Duke big three in the front, and that's all they kept showing. The crazy thing is, they called like um, Rachel Nichols called up Zion and R.J. Barrett to the the table to speak with the commentators and stuff. And if I was Cam Reddish. 
that would be kind of sick. Look, because look. you just get excluded. Yes, like, don't nobody yes. care about you. However, he did sign up for that when he decided to make a big three with the likely number one and two pick in the NBA draft. So True. And he didn't win a national championship. So, looking back on it, he probably would have gone somewhere else. But, regardless, he's still a top ten pick easily. Probably top five. So, the Pelicans, as of right now, have the number one pick. Things are looking up for the Pelicans. The Grizzlies got the number two pick. They're, all, all reports suggest that they're likely going to take John Moran. Well, with David Griffin as the new GM of the Pelicans and them being able to trade Anthony Davis for either the Knicks, Knox, Robinson, and number three pick package, the Celtics, Tatum, Brown, two, three draft picks package, or the Lakers, Lonzo, Ingram, Kuzma draft pick package. Things are looking up for them. They can be the the team of the future, like what the Hawks and Suns are trying to do. They will be that. And, like, let, let's say that they do, not even being biased, let's say the Pelicans take the Lakers' offer. And let's just say the Lakers' offer is Lonzo and Kuzma and the fourth pick. And Hart. Lonzo, Kuzma, Hart, and the fourth pick. The Pelicans then, theoretically, could have Lonzo, Drew Holiday, uh, Kyle Kuzma, Zion Williamson, uh, Jared Culver, uh, someone at the five... It, they could have an incredible, incredible Young team. Core. And although they probably won't win a ton year one, they are going to get better. That's how young players work. Zion's going to get better as the years go on. So two to three years from now, if they still keep all the players they get in that trade, they're a scary team. That's extremely scary team. So New Orleans Pelicans got one, likely taking Zion. The Grizzlies got two, likely taking John Morant. This is where things get a little dicey. Apparently, everyone thinks that this is just a three-player draft with uh, R.J. Barrett, Zion, and uh, John Morant being the three surefire players in the draft. I'm not a fan of that notion personally, but it's it's a 50-50 split on who believes it is and who believes it's not a three-player draft. So the Knicks got the third pick, and I honestly cannot tell you what they're going to do with it. Of course, I if I had to pick something, I say they take they take R.J. Barrett and just play it safe. But also, it's the Knicks, so I could see them. And reports are already coming out saying that they they're enamored. Culver, Jarrett Culver, yeah, they're, they're Jarrett enamored Culver. with Jarrett Culver. And I I believe that the Knicks do offer the best package for uh, Anthony Davis, even though the Lakers have these assets in the number four pick the Knicks are going to offer Robinson who will go next to Zion and that's a nasty front court and then they'll give Knox small forward and then they have the ability to draft RJ Barrett to pair with Zion Frank Nudokina already wants a trade apparently so throw him in there and then let's say they do all that and then they're able to get a point guard like uh Terry Rozier in free agency that's almost instantly a playoff team by that that trade alone or even with they could do that or even with the the third nah there's no way they would take a point guard over rj barrett with the third pick so yeah, yeah. they're gonna pair if they get zion and they have the third or fourth i mean they would pick, put drew holiday at the one drew holiday's better but at then the what two. do they do with rj barrett isn't he a two he'll he's come a three? off the bench oh, first okay. year he he can be a six man it's not like he's yeah. immune to being a six he's a man. bucket getter so so yeah the the knicks got the third pick uh, the Lakers went from 11 to 4. When I tell you I was watching this draft, I was on my phone just BSing, not really doing anything. I saw 11. I'm like, okay, Lakers, about to go get some food, about to leave my room. I see 11 come up as the Minnesota Timberwolves. I went crazy. I was in a room by myself. No Question, one could hear me. Did you know the rule that if you don't get picked at your you get spot, four, you jump right? into the top four? I, I knew that. I, I wasn't sure of it, but I was pretty I was pretty positive that we would be well, a top four. It used four. to be top three. It's It changed now to top four. It used to be if you don't get picked, you're immediately top three. But now that the odds are different, they, they stretched it to four. Imagine and, being the guy that comes out with the, the, the like the, the, like the order. Yeah. He just knows how everything works before anyone says anything. Like you can't crack a smile. Like who, who's his favorite team? Like, I'm not, <laughs> like I would like to be that person, but no, the, the Lakers got the fourth pick. We don't know what the Lakers are going to do with it. 
They could take Jared Culver, Darius Garland, Cam Reddish. Even Bol Bol. No one Bo- knows. <laughs> Bol Bol. But I'm a huge fan of Bol Bol for the record. I also like Bol Bol. My dream trade, if I was the Lakers, would be to trade the fourth pick and whatever the Wizards would need to get Bradley Beal and the ninth pick and then take Bol Bol at nine. That would be incredible. But the likelihood of the Wizards giving up the ninth pick is very Would you very do slim. Lonzo, Hart, Kuzma, and the fourth pick for Beal and the ninth pick? Uh, the Anthony Davis package for uh, Beal and the ninth not pick? Not at all, no. I would want to keep Lonzo. I'd give you Ingram, Hart, and four. Not Kuzma? Whoa. <laughs> no, I You're wouldn't. not getting that, I don't though. think Bradley Beal is that, that valuable. How, you don't realize how Why much Why would the lower? Wizards not do that, though? Because of how low Ingram's, Ingram's stock is low. You don't understand he's this. He's fine. He's no, perfectly he's fine. he's not. He I has under- the Chris Bosh <laughs> vein thrombosis. He is not fine. He is not fine. He, it will probably come up again. Hopefully not for his career. But it will come up again. If I'm the Wizards, I'm taking Ingram Hart Why in the four. Why take the risk of having Ingram? Okay, if I'm not, okay then I'll ask for Kuzma Hart in the four. I'll give them Kuzma Hart in the four. Easy. No, you need to give up. I'm Lonzo. not giving Lonzo. I'm not give, if I'm the only if I'm the Lakers, the one player that is off limits is Lonzo. Or you need to give up Hart, Ingram, Kuzma, and the four, and keep definitely just not. Lonzo. Bradley Beal's not that nice. That's an Anthony Davis trade package, not a Bradley Beal trade package. But you're getting Beal and nine. You're not. Who are we getting? getting? It's a three player draft. <laughs> who, who are we gonna get nine? <laughs> now, what if the Wizards don't believe that? It's all in their GM's mind. Whatever it is, the Cavs got the fifth pick. Who knows what the Cleveland Cavaliers are gonna do? I think it's ironic that LeBron still got a higher pick than the, the Cavs. The only thing that's safe is they're not picking a point guard because they have Colin Sexton. True. I'm sure that they would love Jared Culver or DeAndre Hunter. They're probably gonna take DeAndre Hunter. Find a way to move Kevin Love eventually. It'll be fine. On to the sixth pick. The Suns got. The sixth pick. And uh, I say they take they're Darius going, Garland. They're going Kobe White if what? Garland is oh, okay. gone. Yeah, I would say they take Darius Garland. Kobe White will be all right. I don't know that he... He has to be developed the right way, like most raw prospects. But he's a big scorer over passer. He's not as much of a point guard as like Garland and John Morant are. One thing is for sure... The Suns absolutely need a point guard. They've been looking for a long-term solution at the point guard spot for years now, and they just haven't been able to come well, up with uh, it. Well, I've heard rumors about them trading six and like TJ Warren to the Lakers for Lonzo Ball. So I heard that the Bulls want Lonzo too for Chris Dunn and the seventh pick. I mean, would we? Because then we could offer the Pelicans four and seven. But that, like, why would we or do four that? Four and though? six if you do the other one. But then we could also take Jared Culver. But think about it: if you do the, the thing Suns is, deal, though, why would we not take Jared Culver no, no, and Darius no. Garland? Think about it: if you do the sixth pick and do T.J. Warren and the sixth pick for Alonzo Ball, you can easily trade Ingram and your starting small forward is T.J. Warren or starting small forward is LeBron, but or or power forward is LeBron. Either way, because you were starting Ingram at the four half the season anyway. Or we could do that and then take Darius Garland and Jared Culver, and then our lineup would be. Darius Garland, Jared Culver, LeBron James, Kyle Kuzma, and... Look, we're saying all this, but it's whatever LeBron... And Anthony LeBron, Davis. Whatever oh, no, LeBron James Davis. says goes. All right? Whatever True. he says goes. That's why the Lakers are going to wind up not picking anyone in this draft and having someone who can shoot. That's it. So, yes, the seventh pick went to the Bulls. The eighth pick went to the Atlanta Hawks. The ninth pick went to the Washington Wizards. Tenth, Atlanta again because of the last year's trade, Luka and uh, Trey Young switch. They have eight and ten, which is kind of crazy. I believe Atlanta wants Cam Reddish. I believe they'll end up with Cam Reddish in some way. I don't think Cam Reddish will drop that far. I think they're going to have Cam Reddish and Jackson Hayes, if I had to say now, their two picks. 11 went to Minnesota, 12 went to Charlotte, 13 went to Miami, and 14 went to Boston. Who that's the- will pick Bol Bol if he's there. <laughs> yeah, that's what if you think. If he's not there. Robert Williams and Bol Bol, two straight years. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's the end of the lottery. Although I have seen a lot of rumors about us picking Goga Bisadye, who's a draft and stash. Yeah, good luck with but, that one. Uh, we see how that worked with Gershon Yabusele and yeah, Ante Zizic. Dancing Bear. <laughs> That's it for the lottery. The Nets have the 17th pick. 
the 27th pick and the 31st pick, which is the first pick and in the Mark second round. said he will trade picks if necessary. I want them to pick at 17. I don't really care about 27 or 31. I mean, they could find a steal there. Oddly obviously. enough, 27 is the pick that they traded Kyle Kuzma. So, yes. I mean, hey, maybe they can get another. Maybe they can get make up for that mistake. Is it a mistake? Probably not a mistake because we ended up getting. No, it's a mistake. Why would they make that trade? Makes no sense for them. But, yeah, that's the end of the lottery. The Nets, this is the first, this is the first time that they're owning their pick in this high of a position since they traded with the Celtics. <laughs> so, so it's a, it's no, a, that is crazy. It's a great time to be a Nets fan, obviously. Brooklyn is going to be in the Anthony Davis trade market just as much as As hard any as anyone, team. according to Chris Broussard. So, but we'll get into that later. We want to talk about the Nets getting their front office absolutely poached. So, Chris Fleming accepted the lead assistant coach job for the Bulls under Jim Boylan. He used to be, he was the G League, the, the coach of the Nets G League team and won G League Coach of the Year. So it's no surprise he got an NBA job, obviously. And then the big one, Trajan Langdon, the new GM of the Pelicans. He was the G League Executive of the Year, and he was the GM of the Long Island Nets and the assistant GM of the Brooklyn Nets at the same time, which is kind of wild. Yeah, that that's a tough job, but honestly, I'm thinking about it. What moves does a GM of a G League team have to make? If we're being honest, probably just like talent acquisition. G- yeah, but the GM of the Brooklyn Nets is the one who handles the the people who get sent to the G League. True. So, what is he controlling with that? Like, I really want to know the requ- the. He probably sends recommendations. Of a GM of the G League team. The thing with having a your assistant GM be the GM of your G League team is that. You get a, if let's say you do have an extremely nice G League player, you get a hands-on a, like view and a, a bird's yeah. eye view of of your G League team. Whereas like other teams, you, you probably you have the advantage of having your assistant GM know exactly how good the good G League player on your team is. If that makes like the sense. The Nets G League team was amazing. They lost in the finals to in the three Rockets games. G League team, but. Um, Theo Pinson was, like, the best player on their G League team. Him and Big Sauce Allen Williams. And Theo Pinson was a big part of the Nets bench, even though he didn't play. he His energy was great. That was probably easily seen due to Langdon being the GM of their team. And, yeah, so this basically just shows how well of an organization the Nets were built as. They, were, they managed to... Absolutely, completely rebuild, having no lottery picks and making one of, if not the worst trade in NBA history. Sean Marks is making a name for himself as a GM. A for big a name for himself. And now the Nets will look to continue this rebuild and really strike heavy in free agency. Speaking of free agency, uh, a lot of big name free agents were in the second round and still in the playoffs now, like Jimmy Butler. Uh, Tobias Harris, Kawhi Leonard, Kyrie Irving. Uh, Three of those players got dropped in the second round. So let's talk about the second round. Kawhi obviously had the biggest shot of probably his career. This shot will be shown like Michael Jordan's shots are shown today. Now, I was talking about this with a friend of mine. If Kawhi Leonard has another signature shot in this postseason, like if he beats the Bucks on a game winner. This can be the greatest postseason of anyone of all time. And what Period. makes you say that? He will end two series with the buzzer beating series ending shots. And he has 30 almost every single night. And it's not like he's shooting a ton of shots like Harden does. He's shooting the ball well. Of course, there was a game against the Sixers. He took 38 shots the, the last game of the series. And he's guarding the team's best player. He is locking up. He's averaging over 30 points. And he's beating the entire Eastern Conference really by himself. Siakam is his second best player. And, and he's playing well, too. Uh, people might say Lowry. But in the postseason, Lowry is their third best player to me. Then he has Gasol for defensive help, but he's carrying them the way that Jordan carried the Bulls. So since Jordan, this will easily be the greatest postseason if he even takes the Warriors past six games. 
I'm not going to lie, it was great to see Kawhi hit that shot against the Sixers, knowing that ha- because we built up such bad blood watching the Sixers versus Nets series. And also... I I'm, felt no remorse watching Joel yes, Embiid yes. cry. I'm As sorry. As a Celtics fan, I also hate the Sixers because of last season when we beat them in five games. I just don't like the way they talk. They're immature. The way they play, their play style is not good. They're easily guardable, and then they decided to get Jimmy Butler and Tobias Harris and think, oh, we're just going to run the East, and we'll keep talking when we play the Nets. Oh, that kid fight Jared Dudley, and then you cry when you get eliminated in the yeah, second I round. I felt absolutely no remorse for Joel Embiid. Yes, he's passionate about the game. And I yes, get it. He's the best, Every he's NBA the best player. center in basketball, blah, blah. He still lost. I'm sorry. No remorse. You had a good season. Get him next time. Process. Every NBA player is passionate about the game that they play. At least the good ones are. So, if you're going to sit here and absolutely joke on teams when you beat them, airplane, ha, 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 dunk on them, do antics on the bench, then, I'm not uh, going to feel sorry for you when you get clapped and you're crying. I'm not. I'm sorry. Yeah, you got to handle that. Well, I mean, he did embrace the crying after the fact, but... uh. He he should have handled it a little bit better than he did in my. I'm opinion. not saying there was a problem in the way that he handled it. I'm just saying personally, I didn't feel bad for him. Oh, I, neither did I. I I think he'll be fine. I just I enjoyed the iconic picture of Kawhi bent down in front of all of his teammates. Well, I and said, Embiid looking in from out of bounds like no, please no. I, what I said is because. When Kawhi was on their side, like the Raptor side of the bench, I think it would have been an even crazier photo if he was on the Sixer side of the bench, where it's like him surrounded by complete 76ers players and he just bent down. That would have been sick. But I, either yeah. way, either way, that photo is going to go down to history. And imagine if he would have done that in front of Sixers players, and then as soon as the shot went in, they all just started jumping him. <laughs> <laughs> That would have been crazy. <laughs> the second the shot went in, they just start body <laughs> slamming him to the floor. <laughs> would have been a malice in the palace in the seventh game of the second round. But yes, that's not the only storyline of the second round. Obviously, Kevin Durant went down. He is still yet to play another game since, what, what was that, game four of the series? Yeah, because the Rockets lost in six. So KD went, no, it was game five. It was game five he went down because they lost game six. KD went down fifth game of that series the Rockets couldn't pull it out and then uh, and uh I'll have you know Steph Curry finished out that game and the next game with a 33 point second half to end the Rockets season and then went on to sweep the Blazers averaging 36.5 points he scored 37 36 37 and 36 each game Hunter's has been waiting to pull out the Steph Curry stats so I'm glad he finally got to get it off I don't want to hear he's not the best point guard in the league that uh He's he's useless to the Warriors, blah, blah. He's the most important player on that team, bottom line. I don't want to hear otherwise. He changes the way teams have to guard them. And when KD doesn't play, they go back to playing how they played before he got there. With Draymond and him pick and rolls, and teams cannot guard that. I don't know why they can guard him when KD plays. They can't guard him when KD doesn't play. Yeah, uh, KD... He did go down. The Rockets still couldn't pull it out. The Warriors absolutely swept the Blazers without KD. So now he's, I don't want to say he's fresh, but he's definitely going to be ready for the finals. I don't see a way in which he doesn't play. DeMarcus might also play in the finals. Exactly. And uh, yeah, KD is about to go into his free agency. KD is going to be a free agent. AD is going to be on the trade market. It's going to be a crazy offseason. Bradley Beal trade. Blake Griffin might get traded. Then you have all the crazy free agents. What they're the draft, talking about Zion. This should be an incredible offseason. Uh, speaking of the Pelicans and AD, like we said earlier, the Nets are reportedly going to be in the trade market for AD just as heavy as any other team, which honestly comes as a shock to me. Apparently, they're willing to trade D'Lo in a match and trade. And Jared Allen. So what they're going to do is any contract that D'Angelo Russell gets, they have to match it to keep him as an insurance and then if they get word from Kyrie that he will come, they're going to do a sign and trade, basically, where they give D'Lo, Jared Allen, probably Karooks, and like two or three draft picks maybe. That's a big package, but I mean, the Knicks are, can do better than that. So they're going to have to give up a lot for AD. And then 
they'll have enough money since they traded D'Lo. And by that time, they would have gotten rid of Crab's contract for this to work. Yeah, then they could get Kyrie. Alan Crab opted into so his two year deal. Essentially, they're going to have Kyrie, Anthony Davis, and no one else. And that's not a championship team. They'll have Joe Harris, um, 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 and those owners Spencer are exactly, Dinwiddie. They're, they're warranted. No, Spencer Dinwiddie, Joe Harris, and everyone else is a free agent. <laughs> exactly. And AD's going to be a free agent next year. So unless they extend him, unless he agrees to an extension, then... Do uh, I think they should do it? No. I do honestly, I think they might do it? Yes. I, I hope they don't. I don't think that the Nets have the best trade package for AD. I do think that they have something working in their favor, which is that they have an ace in the hole, Trajan Langdon, the, the Pelicans' new GM, obviously used to be the assistant GM of the Nets, so they obviously have a great working relationship with him. So he might, I doubt he gives them a discount because that's his job on the line. I mean, hey, Derek Jeter gave the Yankees a discount for Giancarlo Stanton, so you never know. Maybe, maybe he will give them a discount, Things but I, happen. I doubt David Griffin would let that go down. And uh, I don't think the Nets have a better trade package than the but Knicks, the Celtics, discount, or the Lakers. They'll still have to give up D'Lo and Jared Allen. Is it really a discount? They'll have D'Lo, Zion, and Jared Allen. Like, a discount in the in the t- they'll in terms have D'Lo, of, Drew Holiday, Zion, and Jared Allen. I'm saying a discount in terms of taking their deal over a deal that could be better, such as the Lakers. D'Angelo Russell is the best player that anyone will offer them. Because he's an all-star, yes, but do I think... Uh, I'm not he gonna is the say here. best player value-wise. I refuse to talk bad on D'Angelo Russell. He is Russell, the best so, yeah. player value-wise other than Tatum. I knew you were going to say that. That anyone can offer them. I knew you were going to say Jason Tatum. But uh, Jason Tatum is uh, not D'Angelo Russell. Become an all-star, then talk to me. That's all I have to say. Tatum has more value. Become an all-star, then talk to me. You were the one Make an all-star about game, about and then talk to me. You were th- How about we make an you, all-star you, game? You, 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 all-star you, game, you, you, Jason Tatum? Not in one. Okay. D-Lo, you were the one talking about value. Though. I don't think that the Nets have a better trade package. I think they probably would be able to put together the fourth best trade package in the league behind the Lakers, the Celtics, and the Knicks. So I think there are teams that can have better ones that just don't want to get him. True, obviously. I mean, but out of teams that get him, they're probably fourth. D'Lo was nominated for most improved player along with Pascal Siakam and De'Aaron Fox. Um, Fox isn't winning. It's, it's between a two man, Siakam yeah. and Russell. It's they just had to race. nominate a third person just because. And oh, yes, De'Aaron Fox had a great season. He's a solid NBA point guard, but he's not winning that award. So. Not a chance. There's not a chance he wins that award. It's a two horse race, and obviously the D'Lo stand in me, the Nets stand in me, wants to say that D'Angelo Russell is going to win. Do but I think he'll win it? No. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with... If I had to predict, I would say Pascal Siakam wins it. Especially just, because Pascal got more All-NBA votes than D'Angelo Russell did. So, that means the same media who voted for that will vote for that award. And they obviously like Siakam over D'Lo. So. Other other awards, Spencer Dinwiddie did get snubbed from Six Man of the Year. He wasn't even oh, nominated. So, what's crazy is... The Clippers had two people nominated for sixth man of the year, which is ridiculous to me because sixth man of the year is the first man off the bench. Exactly. How can a team have two first men off the Montrez bench? Montrez Harrell and Lou Will. One of them, if I was them, I would have said, listen, one of us got to pick. Like, who's the sixth man? It's it, clearly it's Lou, Lou Will. And Lou Will's going to win it regardless of if Dinwiddie was, was nominated or not. But... It is what it is. Lou Will's. I just the don't award. understand how you can have a six man of the year award and put your seventh man <laughs> yeah. on the on the, uh, nominate your seventh man. Like, but that doesn't um, make sense. the the important story here is about the all rookie team. All right. So if you didn't hear, the NBA's all rookie first team consisted of Luka Doncic, Trey Young, by unanimous vote, those two only, DeAndre Ayton, Jaron Jackson Jr., and Marvin Bagley, which is perfect. That's what it should have been. And the second team consisted of Shai Gilgis Alexander, Fine. Colin Sexton, Good. Landry Shimet, uh-huh. Mitchell Robinson, yep. and Kevin Huerter. Uh-huh. <laughs> Other than that, the player, the rookie with the most votes that didn't make it was Mikhail Bridges. He had 31. Kevin Knox had 22. Josh Okogie had 12. Jalen Brunson, 10. Alonzo Trier, 10. And then we get to Rodion's Kuruks, who had 9. Also... Josh Okogie got a first team vote, and Miles Bridges got a first team vote. That's all I got to say. Whoever voted first team for those two, 
should get stripped of that right. Because, yes, they're they're solid players. They're defensive-minded players. They're not better than any of the five on that list, and they're not better than half of the second team either. So, that that is just ridiculous. But, Karooks got robbed. Even if he didn't make it, he should have been the first or second man off it. He should not be seven deep in the people who did not make it. Not at all. I think... I think Alonzo Trier got boosted because he is a New York Knick, and he was a good story. Probably one of the Knicks' best stories of this season. Jalen Brunson, he stepped in for the Mavericks. Josh Okoge played, what, 23 minutes a game for the Timberwolves? Yeah, and also he had to start a lot of games because there was a time where Teague, Covington, Derrick Rose, all injured. Their whole team kept getting injured, so he had to play a lot. Kevin Knox, also a New York Knicks. He all played right, 28 all minutes right, a game. All right, Kevin Knox is all volume. I'm going to get slack for this. That Kevin Knox, people think he had a, a good rookie season. Kevin Knox's season was so overrated. He shot 37% from the field. He cannot shoot. He shoots the ball too much. Yes, his trade value is still high because he's young. But until he consistently can give solid, efficient offense, I would not even want to think about trading for him. Ooh, Kevin Knox, yeah. Kevin Knox, to me, I think he has... I value him more than Hunter does, but I also understand what he's saying in that his his production comes solely based on the amount of minutes and the amount of shots he was allowed to take. Because he played 28 minutes per game, and the Knicks really had no primary shot takers, so... They gave him the keys and said, hey, uh, take us where you can take us. And he obviously took them nowhere, but Kevin Knox's value is boosted because of the amount that he shoots the ball. Um, And then you have Mikael Bridges, who is just good 3 and D rookie. I have no problem with him being 11. I just think Karooks was on a similar level to Bridges this season to me. Since we're talking about all NBA teams and all rookie teams, we might as well talk about the all NBA team. D'Lo did not get snubbed, but... Yeah, he didn't deserve to make it, but the fact that Kemba Walker was the last guard in and D'Lo had a slightly worse season than Kemba overall, and the difference in votes was uh, Kemba got four second team and 39 third team votes, and D'Angelo Russell got three. (laughs) Three Three third team. Three Three third team votes. Three. 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 The NBA first team consisted of Giannis Antetokounmpo, James Harden, Stephen Curry. Uh, actually, Giannis had 500 first team votes. Him and Harden were con- were the only two unanimous people. Uh, they each had 100 first team votes. And uh, Steph Curry, Paul George, and Nikola Jokic rounded out the first team. All NBA second team. Joel Embiid, KD, Damian Lillard, Kawhi Leonard. Kyrie Irving, and the All-NBA third team, Russell Westbrook, Blake Griffin, LeBron James, Rudy Gobert, and Kemba Walker. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Saying LeBron James' name on the All-NBA third team just doesn't sound right. But we said it earlier. He's not going to be, he wasn't going to be an, a first, an All-NBA first team player because players like Paul George are, are being nominated for MVP. Steph Curry and James Harden had incredible seasons, and Giannis Antetokounmpo is the likely MVP. So LeBron really had no room to be in the first team. When we go to other players receiving votes, like we said earlier, D'Lo had three total votes all for the All-NBA third team. He was tied with Dwayne Wade and DeMar DeRozan, and he was above Devin Booker, Eric Gordon, Drew Holiday, Kyle Lowry, and Lou Williams. The players above him were Donovan Mitchell, Mike Conley, Ben Timmons, Klay Thompson, and Bradley Beal. All right. The guy who took the guy who gave Dwayne Wade a vote is an absolute clown. I understand it's his last season. Like I do appreciate the tribute, but did that Dirk is get a just vote? A little bit crazy. Dirk did not get a vote. So that guy was it. just a Heat fan. That's the bottom line. But what I will say is LeBron on the third team. He actually did deserve third team this year, but it's like new to see that, and it's a trend that he's on. He will be on the down soon, and the new stars are rising. It's a new era we're coming into. 
Yeah, I do think LeBron is in for a, a couple, like maybe two or three more yeah. 26 to 28 point per game. His 27-8-8 line that he re- repeatedly gets. Which but... is crazy because he's already 34 years old. So this man's going to be scoring 28 points per game as a... 36, 37 year old man. Like, that's kind of crazy. That's unprecedented in the NBA. And um, our friend had texted us when this list came out and said, How did Gobert make it over Towns? Personally, I do think Gobert deserved it because if you think Towns deserve, made it over him, that's just a box score thing. Because, yes, Towns is a 25 and 12 guy. But Gobert is the anchor of that defense. He turns the Jazz into a playoff team instantly when he's on the floor. That's extremely true. He's he's the best and most important part of their defense. Literally, he, exactly how you said it. He's probably the best defensive big man in the game. The Him be- or Joel Embiid. Yes, he's the best defensive center in the game. What happened to Hassan Whiteside? Oh, boy. <laughs> boy. Don't even get me started on Wayside. He just got lost on the heat. He just got buried on the heat. He's one of those players who can block shots and still play no defense because <laughs> true. It, he goes for the block and if he misses up oh, made it. They made it if they don't if he don't block it. And with that, that is gonna conclude this episode of the Hoop Ball Nets podcast. Free agency's coming up, the draft is coming up, the AD trade saga's probably not even in full effect yet. Did you see they changed the free agency start time to 6 p.m. Eastern time on June 30th instead of midnight? Really? Yes, so it That's is. That's going to shake things it up. It is midday on June 30th. That so is going to shake instead of those late things. night signings, it'll be midday June 30th signings. At least we won't have to stay up till 1 a.m. Like, uh, Hassan Whiteside signed a new contract. <laughs> we, at least we'll be able to see it at 6 p.m. But yes, that'll do it for this episode of the Hoop on Nets podcast. We hope you guys enjoy. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes. You can look up Brooklyn Nets or Hoopball Nets. Either way, just subscribe. Leave a rating and review. Five stars, please. All ratings and oh, not all ratings. All reviews are getting read on the podcast. So make sure you go leave them. You can follow us on Twitter at Hoopball Nets. Get us to 60 followers because right now we only have 58. So uh, two people. <laughs> the next two people to subscribe get absolutely nothing. But we'll shout you out on the podcast. Actually, the next two people to subscribe get shouted out on the podcast. So make sure to subscribe. Make sure to follow our Twitter account at Hoopball Nets. You can follow us at individually. And give us some ideas of fun stuff to do. It can include 2K, rankings, anything you want. I don't care. I'm up for anything. And so am I. So make sure you give us your, give us your suggestions. Uh, you can follow us individually on Twitter. I'm at Najee Adams underscore. If you don't know how to spell Najee, it's N-A-J-E-E Adams underscore. Hunter is at Hunter underscore J-K-R on Twitter. Make sure to give us both a follow as well as the podcast. We hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you all next time. The Nets offseason is about to heat up, and we're ready. Later. Later.